<laughs> February 22nd, 8.28 a.m., morning meeting. Okay. Uh, did I uh, forget to tell you I have a terrible memory? Terrible memory. I didn't You told me this morning when I asked you to tell me. Okay. We well, you telling me to remind you about that phone bill? I'm just telling you, yeah, don't count on it. That's probably smart. No. Without one of my phone, she was like, mm. I didn't find somebody to take Molly. Because <coughs> I just don't have the time for her. Well, good golly, that's Molly. And by then, we'd already got, you know what I mean? Like another dog. Yeah, that, that, that one I got out there is a hand with shoes on there. Everything tears up everything. She's a baby. Uh, but she does. She does. Yeah. Right my daughter don't. My arm. Look at my arm. She took the piece. I got a big skin. Look at my arm stretched. Like oh, that's not what they she, she went, she went, went, went after this last time. She went like running with me. Because the dog's all went through by the window, I think. Well, I don't know. She's just running out there in their yard and they just don't ever see it. She's just running out there in their yard and they just don't ever see it. Molly's been in the house. They just put her outside because they got this nice house and it was too much work. You know what I'm saying? You know, what we call Palm Poly Tracks. You are the word at the beginning. One with God. Your hidden glory in creation <laughs> Now revealed in you are right. What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus
as we came in. Have you ever seen the one? No. The one right from the side. Yeah. If the eyes begin to open. Oh. The blindness needs the light. Oh, good. You have to see. I see the world in light. I see the world in wonder. I see the world in light, bursting in living color. I see the world in the way, and I'm walking in the light. Have you ever seen the world in the dark? Come on! Did you ever see the world in the dark? Hey Daryl, Daryl. Yes, yes. I have, I have uh, two uh, the wrenches that I borrowed from Randy. I have them in the van. Oh, yeah, I saw them. I saw them. Oh my God. Across the ranch and something. I saw them. Yeah, they're in the van. Are they? Are they fluorescent or something? No. Not fluorescent. No. How do you see them? One of them semi fluorescent. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I mean they're. No, I'll give him a word yeah. to you after. Okay. okay. Yeah. Chris and Hutchins, is that what you're doing? Yeah. Here, here comes some of them right now, Tom. Here comes the Indian trail right now. Double harness. Now, when are they going to break the burritos? I don't know. Probably go. Okay. Okay. That's the only reason you showed up this morning, Daryl? No. I'm going to put the burrito in the stuff. Hey, listen, I brought my Bible today. I'm going to help you with it. If you no, didn't didn't me with it. <laughs> well, I got one too, remember? Yeah. Stop me, I'll talk to you back. Don't do anything wrong now. Well, don't worry, I won't. Okay. I'm not worried about you. <laughs> All right, Joe, I brought companies here. Oh. Hi, Joe. <laughs> There's a little Joe. Hi. 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 Hello. <laughs> She's trying to play this off. I don't know. She told you about it. Maybe she built something. Maybe. What did you do? Huh? Oh, okay. You have that card. He's got it. Oh, okay. Okay. You have that card. Very good. <laughs> oh, I know now. Okay. Right. Good <laughs> 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 Yeah, that was it. Yes, I didn't have to report his bars. I just wanted to pay bills with this yesterday. I wasn't so nervous about it. Sometimes I had to throw at least $2,000 in my pocket to pay bills. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. Well, we'll see if you measure up. 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 We'll see if you measure up.
Um, yeah, that much money. Yeah. Don't run off the line, believe. Right. I'm a little nervous about that. I imagine. Yeah. Somebody go with you that holding a taser. You might have one. Good. Way to carry it when doing that. I'm going to do that. I've carried as much as 10 grand in my pocket before. <laughs> yeah, I've carried as much as 10 grand in my pocket before. Thank you. Wow. It's a little nerve wracking. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that is better than going to buy. Thank you so much. Molly might be a fan. He made that card, but he bought it at the dollar tree. Molly really made that at Dollar Tree. Got Dollar Tree. You might have to get a card, okay? Do I'm not telling you. I have to get a card. I have to get a card. Okay. Yeah, he cards for all kinds of uh, things. So, this stuff I can get a card and don't have to say anything, okay? Yeah. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. Oh, my God. Did you move? No. Did you move? No. You got until today, dude. Otherwise, then you're going to have to go to church last night. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, man. Oh, I went to church and I'll be out after like eight tonight. Eight tonight. Uh, you'll be out before eight tonight. Uh, I'm there looking for that bed. I didn't find it. Floor to Gore. Okay. Who is that anyway? It's Thomas. Oh, that's him. Oh, he forgot it. He forgot we're having a meeting. <laughs> Maybe he's running or not. No, I'm having a meeting. Hey, what now? There you go. Sit down and don't be hey. <laughs> I don't know if we have any uh, chairs anywhere, but if we do, we I, I'm I tried to put all of them out at the fire last night. Outside, right? I put outside. all of them out, out, uh, out that you I brought them out. Well, room. I didn't bring them out there. I can get in there. I did. I yeah, we got them out. There's no chairs in the office. No, no. I have not brought them out. Brought I know if there's any chairs in the office. We no, we just brought them out. Yeah, we got them out already. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Okay, one in the middle, okay, one on the corner. Okay, we're going to get up and let the matter. Thank you. Are you we'll put it in the church notice board. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Came from Dollar Tree. We paid a dollar for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the signature. Hey, uh, um, some of the people probably can send in the other room. Uh, some people can probably send in the other room. You want me to go sit in the other room? Yeah, some people can. If you want to. There's, I can get a church over there. I can't sit there. No, I can sit there. I think some of them should have sat in the other room and let them sit there. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, Corinne. Corinne. Yeah. Corinne, you can come back here and sit down. Uh-huh. Come back here and sit down. Hey, Mother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't remember who it was, but somebody, some church in this area took up an offering, I think. I can't remember the name. Uh, I've heard some weird. And I think uh, got this organization, a nice van, and one little thing I forgot, maybe it's a <coughs> I think one of the nice uh, individuals said, why don't you get somebody to take your picture of that and send it to me on my phone, and I don't think we did that. Yes, I, I did. Somebody did. did you do I, I sent a picture did. to Joe. Pam did it? Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll take one today with everybody. You can take one today with everybody. You can show with it everybody. to everybody at your fine no, church. Yes. Yes. I wouldn't yes. tell them thank you. I was shocked when I saw it because it looks like a brand new one. <laughs> But it's 12 years old, 2008, and I think this was 2020. Mm -hmm. 
I want to go to your church and get on the board and be one of the leaders, but still get what you want to do. What do you think about the back? Yeah, I mean, yeah, huh? yeah. Yeah. Really, I think find another church that thinks the back of okay. <laughs> so some churches kind of straight across the board like the one I grew up in. He said, no, 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 you know what? It's so nice and clean. It looks new. We ought to try to keep it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, you know what? The old van has been driving for a while. Sorry, y'all. Mm -hmm. When you get in there, it smells like smoke. Mm -hmm. Did you know people smoke in that old blue van that's not on its last foot? It is on its last foot. And they, they not only do they smoke a lot, but they drink a whole bunch of Cokes and Dr. Peppers. <laughs> I knew you had to say Cokes and Dr. Peppers. Thank you for putting her You better be quiet. And everybody Coke We're making two tough wheels. If you're going to drive that van, you got a in that van, can't smoke out. Is that okay? Amen. Yes. Amen. No, I know somebody heard that. They said, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. It's so sad. I'll tell you how inconsiderate that some people are. Lord Daddy, who has a terrible breathing problem, she can't stand smoke. She should quit breathing if it blows smoke on her face. She's sitting in the van. They're sitting on this side, and they think they got a smoke, so they turn the Lord at it. Lord's it okay if I have a cigarette? I'll roll down the window. I just lie it up. And she tends to say, oh, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> well, it ain't okay. But you smoke anyway, right? We'll see you there. But now, even if Lord Alley's in the van or not in the van, we're not supposed to smoke in it, okay? Okay. And then we even made another more radical statement. There's no, we don't want you to carry Cokes and Dr. Peppers in there because you spill them. And I took a look at that old van the other day just to make sure I looked inside. And it's all carpet, it's all this stuff. It looks like there's four or five years of uh, coke sitting on it. You know, you spill your coke over it. And so you drive it and then you just turn it in. We're going to be more disciplined, is that okay? Yes. And uh, let me ask one or two people from the sign of this to Utah. What in the world did you take up an offering and get us a nice van? What's wrong with you people? What, what <laughs> church do you can do that? You know? They knew Paul was here. The love of God. Oh, my God. Oh, God had something to do with it? <laughs> you think God wants us to? Of course. God, God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Right? Well, we deeply appreciate it. Yes, we do. Thank you. That's not even the word we're looking for. Exactly. I don't know. Everyone There's no word for it. I want to read a few things. By the way, we've got, a, we've got a crowd that's in charge of the meeting today. I don't want to buy a problem too long. But just a little bit. I decided I was going to take a closer look at the book of Proverbs and see how much is said there about helping the poor. Proverbs has a lot of topics of covered. Helping the poor is the only topic, but I was surprised to find out that I've got about, I don't know, 10 or 15 or something no, I mean, I right down here, and I hadn't even read all that. Just listen real quick. 1421 Proverbs said, Blessed are those who help the poor. Amen. Amen. And the next verse said, Blessed are those people that live in Utah and that one spoke in What chapter is that? Yeah. What chapter is that? Where is that at? It says, Those who oppress the poor insult their maker. Capital M. So helping the poor honors him. Amen. Helping the poor honors him. And that's kind of what Joe said. They did this because of God. And then 1917 says, if you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and he right. will repay you. Yes. I don't know if he'll repay you in this life, but I know for sure he will in the next life. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
And then 21.13 says, Those who shut their ears to the cries of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. That church didn't shut their ears. Pastor, can you read that again? I missed it. Will you read that? Yeah. That last phrase, yes. Those who shut their ears to the cries of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. Thank you. I just want to remember if you emphasize that poor doesn't necessarily just mean financial. Yeah, right. More than money. Money. Yeah, it doesn't just mean yeah. necessarily financial. Yeah. It's not monetary. Yeah. I think she's that right. Yeah. Most of the time, I think when it uses the word poor, it means lack of money. Lack of money is a real problem. Did you know that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I went home kind of early yesterday because the doctor told me that since I had a viral pneumonia, I should come take it easy for a while, and I've been working pretty hard. So I went home just a little early. No sooner I got home, I got this phone call. And uh, here, my caseworker wants to talk to you. So the caseworker wanted to know if I was helping this lady, and I said, Yeah, I've been helping her. <coughs> she said, I've been. Uh, there's one problem. I would like to uh, just ignore this family and take them off my list, but and he's gonna need help. I checked the house and they don't have any food in there. And they have clothes that belong to the four chair. kids no. that are stacked up on the floor. And she says, if you will get them some help and not get them some food. Can you get in this big chair, girl? I'll take him off my list. I've been watching them. I've been threatening to get Hey, where's the singers at? Yeah. Yeah. But the yeah. two things is if you yeah. can help her tonight, yeah. get food, and I'm going to come back to the And if I see they got food, boy, there's some food right here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. If you can get some food in that house. Yeah, thank you. And if you can get them to do laundry, because I got a stack of laundry mm -hmm. piled up with the kids. She said, I'll make them on the list. Mm -hmm. But if not, I'm going to keep watching it day after day, and she's going to be under threat of losing her four kids. Oh, wow. I don't think it's like, why you love it? There's some way we can do that. I told Pam, she didn't think we could spring it loose. I told my wife went around the kitchen, she helped her. We got some food out here, some food over here, and some food over here. She loaned me a little bit of money to help me do that. They thought that they could come over here, but we don't have too many washers and dryers that kind of get a whole bunch of stuff for us. A few dollars to do laundry. And uh, I said, I'm clear out here in Edmond, but if you can catch a ride out here, I'll meet you somewhere about halfway. And I'll give you this food, and I'll give you this cash so you can do laundry. So when that lady comes back, you won't lose the kids. See, once you lose the kids, the age yeah. <coughs> it ain't always real easy to get them back. Is it? No. no. <sighs> and that wasn't the only problem. <coughs> a few days ago, she found out, surprisingly, that her 16 year old son, who got on the school bus every day, wasn't really going to school. And she got a letter from the school. She told him he's missed 10 days of school. Uh -huh. And she started crying and said, If I can't pay something on that, and I'll take me to jail. If she goes to jail, what's going to happen to the kids? DHS. Maybe that's what they need. I'm just saying, financial poverty. I'm sorry. Sometimes. I think she was as It really means a big problem. So you know that, don't you? Yes. I bet some of you have been in jail and prison. If you'd had the money to get bailed out, you wouldn't have to stay there for six months or six years or whatever. But if you had the money, then you could get your way out. So financial poverty can be a problem. And so, uh, but real quick, now, I know this dude's sitting out there. Just wait. <laughs> 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 no, 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 yeah, you'll appreciate it. <laughs>
Phillips keeps on going up, standing up and down. 126 says, some people are always greedy for more, yeah. but the God loves right. love right. to give. Yeah. Amen. Amen. One of those people is giving that they have a God to give. Yes, they are. And then another one says, 22.9, blessed are those who are generous because they feed the poor. Well, I can't wait for you two years ago to have that nice and then 25 if your enemy is hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. Both the feet are empty. 28, 27, whoever gives to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to, the, to poverty will be cursed. That's a I'm
Which one do you want? Oh, okay. so, oh golly. Burrito. Nice. Uh, you got burrito? I got burrito. Okay. Do you have any uh, hot sauce? Yeah. yeah. You want to go? And I just moved that so it is. Where's Pastor Bob at now? Okay, Decapitated. <laughs> How do I do that? I don't know. Experiment. Experiment. Yeah. There's no space. The only thing you're Thank you. Can I have so one, ma'am? Ma'am? Can I have one of the sauces for weapons? Jimmy okay, sauce? Yeah, hot sauce. I don't know which color we use. Thank you. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, I got it. Yeah, you did. Do you want another one? Bumpy? Yeah. Okay, well, over here. She'd like another one. Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> I love them. They're good. Anybody else? I know. I'm a hot person. Okay. Who's that for? Yeah. Huh? Me, I just put it in the Yeah. Wow. Hey. Jimmy, how are you? Oh. Yeah, I'm good. I'm great. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. You bumped it again. <laughs> you did not. Yeah. Yeah, he's right there. Hold on. Sit down. I got it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Take care of it. And thank God for all this stuff right here. And you got good if we don't have to do that. Father, we have a special time. We have people that come from a long way. Yes, Lord. There are a lot of sacrifices. Come on here. Yes. We ask you to bless the food for it. And thank you for nourishing it this morning. Using these people. There are your arms and your legs. Yes, Lord. And your feet. And we we'll all have that same responsibility and that same privilege that we'll just pick it up and do it. So it's mandated the way we read the Bible and yes. according to Pastor Mom. Yes, Lord. So we just thank you. We look forward to the service this morning and what God is bringing to us. He's always got something good. Yes. Hot off the press. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, you folks take over and have music. Or whatever you think right. Okay? <laughs> 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 oh, you know that more thing? Yeah. 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 I'm not being thank you for giving to the Lord. Did you guys know it? Thank 
Thank you for giving me Lord. I'm alive in the Thank you for giving me the Lord. Beyond that, those things are a big deal, but beyond that, 
It's about the good news that God gives us eternal life. Amen. That's what's exciting about doing this kind of stuff. Yes. Now, you probably have some more music, right? Thank you, Lord, Daddy. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I actually feel like the Lord's leading me in a different way. Um, so something you may or may not know is um, my parents and a lot of the parents from the Indian church were from, and a lot of the grandparents from the Indian church that were from, they chose to serve the Lord in India, and they lost a lot of the comforts and the friends, the family. You know, my dad was personally kicked out of his family for coming to the Lord. And wow. they had to struggle to serve God. Wow. They chose to choose, they chose God over their family, over their friends, over having the nice things in this world just for God. Amen. And just to be able to share what they found in their life through Jesus Amen. to others. That's how passionate they were about what they found in Jesus Christ in the midst of a world and a country that is full of idolatry, that focus on getting wealth and keeping it for yourself and building yourself up, building your family up. They chose to lay all that down for Christ. Amen. And we are here today because someone gave us that opportunity and shared that love with us. And I, I'm my heart is filled with thankfulness for the love that you have showed us for, you know, a small piece of metal that we were able to donate and the food that we're able to provide. But more than that was the love of God that somebody showed us. Yes. And, and it's a domino effect. Somebody showed that to our grandparents and then to our parents and then to us. And we're able to show that to others around um, y'all. And we, we hope that the love of God pours out of every one of you into others that need that hope and that salvation more than the food, more than the need. Those are important. But we have to show the love of God. And I was reminded of a scripture verse. Um, Psalms 40. Psalms 40, verse 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, and set me and out of the miry clay and set my feet on a rock yes. how many of you that's your testimony today Amen. that he drew me out of this horrible pit yes. put my feet upon the rock Amen. and why did god have to put our feet on the rock Please, absolutely the rock. we are that miry clay all we want to do is slip back into that horrible pit our tendency is just to go back there into the horrible sin horrible life that we live and the thoughts it's not even our actions it can be our thoughts and that's all we want to do time and time again that's why god has to keep drawing us out and putting us on a rock and stabilizing us so that we can focus on him and be more secure in his foundation and i just want to encourage you all the next verse says blessed is the man that makes the lord his trust and respect is not the proud or turn aside to lies let that be our testimony today, that blessed be his name. Amen. He saved Amen. our grandparents, he saved our parents, he saved our friends, he saved us. We have that wonderful testimony. So I want to thank uh, Pastor Vaughn and all those that worked so hard to bring others and to show others the love of God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Well, you love you, Pastor. <laughs> God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. So good, he's so good to 
To them for the call according, according to, to his, his purpose. purpose. All right, I think everybody knows at least 
And all of y'all probably have heard that verse sometime yeah. in your life. Yes. Right? Yes. Amen. So it is definitely a something that uh, we can uh, uh, trust and uh, rely upon as a promise from God, right? right? That when things are not going so great, we can take comfort in this word and say, God, I know this doesn't look so great right now, but I'm trusting your word that says what? All things work together for good. And I know that I am called according to your purpose. I'm your child. So it doesn't look so great right now, but I know that I am called according to your purpose. So it'll all work out to good, right? Y'all believe that? Amen. 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 All right. So that's why later at the end of that chapter it says, what? I am persuaded... That neither death, nor life, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's now turn to Acts chapter 16. So 15 or 16? 16, yes. So, um... So Acts chapter 16, I mean, this is a big chapter, so I'm not going to read everything, but I want to share a story from here, okay? okay. So I'm going to go quickly, we're, we're almost out of time. So verse 9 says, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night, he was in another place, okay? And he appeared and he said, there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Okay? So, Paul was trying to go somewhere else, and the Holy Spirit stopped him and said, what? Uh, don't go there. And then he saw this vision in the night and said, there's a person from a place called Macedonia. Okay? Uh, come and preach here. So, do you know that uh, where Macedonia is? No. Yes. Way over there. Way over there. Way over there. <laughs> over there. <laughs> it's near Greece, right? Greece. Yes. Above Greece, right by. Uh, <coughs> right by Whitehall. It's where Bosnia and Bosnia. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The man knows his stuff. Yeah. So, so basically, this is uh, this is a, a part of Europe. Uh, at that time, okay? It's a part of Europe now. It's not a very famous part of Europe now. You it's probably heard of Alexander the Great made famous. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, that's crazy. And, uh, but yeah. they, uh, I mean, it's, you know, when you think of Europe now, you think of what? Germany or England or Spain, all those kind of countries you might have heard of, France, right? But Macedonia was a part of, uh, part of Europe, and there were no Christians over there, okay? And Paul was going to go to Asia, where we brown people are from. And the Holy Spirit said, uh, actually, hold up. That's not where I want you to go right now. He wanted, he sent in a dream, somebody from Europe. Okay? Uh, who was calling him to help him. Just like Pastor Bond, uh, you know, uh, you know, when we talk sometimes, he tells us need, calls us sometimes with need, right? Or he doesn't, he doesn't really have to ask him, can we help you, <laughs> right? So he's so modest, uh, but it's just like that, right? So, so somebody was calling uh, uh, Paul from Europe in a dream, and uh, to come there. So think about it, though. Paul was about to do something, about to do something historical, okay? Because Paul obeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit. He went to Europe. That's why y'all were over here. Right? Okay? Uh, because, what? He brought the gospel to your forefathers. Y'all with me? Yes. Yeah? And your forefathers brought it to our forefathers. Right. Right? But thank God that Paul obeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit that day, right? Yes. Y'all with yes. me? Yes. Yes. So, and the gospel of God, of Christ, went to that place. And the uh, person called Lydia got saved, and um, I believe she might be one of the first people to come to Christ. I don't know how you're wrong, but to Christ from Europe. So that really, uh, you know, kind of precursor to kind of this country and, you know, the gospel of 
Christ spare, spreading this way, right? So when Lydia came to Christ, he might have thought, man, things are going good. <coughs> now I know why God brought me here. Everything's going so wonderful, right? And then he's walking down the street, and he hears this young lady uh, <laughs> talking some nice things about him, right? And he said what? She said what? What was she saying? Because verse, um, <coughs> verse 17, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Um, except a small problem. If you read the verse before that, it says what? It came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel uh, possessed with a spirit of divination met us, brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. You know what soothsaying is? Fortune telling. Fortune telling. Uh oh. Okay. So what does it say about fortune telling here? Bad news. Bad news. It's bad. Bad, bad, bad. bad. A spirit of divination, yeah. right? Right. That's a, that's a fancy word for demon. Okay? Uh, you all understand demon? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So she was possessed with a demon that was letting her uh, fortune tell, right? Tell people their futures. Okay? And so this person who's possessed is now saying something that sounds like a gospel. Oh my God. Can that happen? All the time. All the time? You think they have false preachers out there? Oh, yeah. Yes. How do we know what their faults are true? By their fruit, right? Yes. Yeah, by their fruit. That's right. The words come to life into action, man. He knows right? His stuff, right? So, by their fruit, you can know the good fruit or bad fruit, right? From God or from demon. How they so, are. Paul, he was full of the Holy Spirit, and he didn't want to, you know, some of us, we enjoy hearing this good stuff, right? We enjoy flattery, like, wow, we even invite these people into our homes, into our lives. Man, they said some good stuff about me. That's right. Preach on. Right? right? Some of us would have said that. But Paul, that's not what Paul, Paul didn't say preach on. Yeah, sure. That's right. That's a good point. Right? So, but in this instance, though, Paul was about to not let somebody else praise him because he knew where the source was. Right? Right. So, you got to be careful about somebody who's trying to flatter you or somebody who's trying to give you something good. Right? Huh? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. So, if somebody's trying to praise you, I mean, obviously you should be gracious, but be careful, right? Right. You've got to know that not everybody says something good to you means good for you. Right. 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 It yes. It's trap. how they act. Because it could be a trap. Right. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be gracious or have the fruit of the Spirit in you, right? Right. But sometimes you got to withstand against that. So what did Paul do? Yeah, That's right. He turned around and and he and he said he didn't say, "Oh, sister, thank you. Come join us for fellowship." Right? <laughs> oh, we love you so much. What did he say? He was grieved when he heard that come from our holy things come out of an unholy mouth. He was grieved. Right? Right. Are you all grieved when you hear? The name of God being used in vain. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right? So what did he say? He yeah. said, to turn to the spirit. He didn't speak to her. Notice that he did not condemn the young girl. Right? Sometimes we're quick to condemn the person that might be doing something that, he, that might, they might be doing it under the influence. Oh, under the influence of what? Alcohol? Yeah, yeah but it goes deeper than that, right? Under the influence of demons. Mm -hmm. You all know demon? Yes. Right? Yeah. So yeah, so under the influence of alcohol, drugs, whatever, but it really starts from where? Mm -hmm. Demons, right? Listen, demons believe, that's what demons Oh yeah, demons believe and tremble, it says. <laughs> that's right. But if, if a demon comes in a person, they don't tremble or obey, but the demon makes them go away from God, right? Right. It leads you down a path of disruption. Right? So Paul was grieved for that young lady. Okay? He can preach the gospel and he knew uh, where that was coming from. So he turned and said, What? I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he did what? 
that moment of spirit left. At that moment, right? In the name of Jesus, the spirits obey, right? Right. <coughs> they don't ask for a vacation, right? They don't say, can you come back in next week, right? right. They say what? That the, name, uh, the sound of your name, the demons run and flee. Right? Right. So the name of Jesus Christ is powerful. Yes. Right? right. Amen. So, so when Paul said that, the demon came out of this young girl. And notice, very careful, it says he came out. Right? And he was speaking to he, like I said. He was not condemning this girl. Right? Because the love of Christ, the blood of Christ, was shed for people like you and I. Right? Yes. People who might be struggling with... These demons, okay? And our condemnation is not against people who are in sin. You have to be very careful to not uh, to condemn people who are in sin, okay? We are really added to love and show grace because that's what God did for us, right? Yes. Right. You all with me? Yes. You're getting my point? Yes. Okay? So he rebuked the demon and said, he, he didn't say he spoke to her. He said he spoke to him, the demon, and said to come out of her. her right? right. Uh, the writer did not mix up the pronouns there. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? Mm -hmm. He didn't get confused about who he's speaking to. Okay? So sometimes when you're ministering to somebody, you got to know what you're dealing with. You all with me? Yes. So sometimes the person might be saying something that they didn't mean or want to say, but you really got to speak to the thing that is influencing their life. You all with me? Yes. In the name of Jesus, you can ask that demon to come out. Yeah. You all with me? Yes. Amen? So, because it might not be the drug or the alcohol that's the root of the problem. You all with me? Yes. So, anyway, so at that same moment, the demon came out of her, and, and she was like a normal person. Okay? So now things are about to go bad. Okay? So... Okay. What happened was that when the people that were using her to make a profit, right? There are some evil people in this world, right? That use other people to make a profit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some of us might have been a pawn in somebody else's scheme. You all with me? Yeah. Have yeah. anybody had that experience? Yeah. Yes. Because God is sending, that was God is sending people into your life to free you from that, right? Yeah. God loves you. And he can free you from that situation. You all with me? You don't, you're not under the bondage of any man. Okay? The message of Jesus is freedom and joy. Yes. I got a question. You said something about being a pawn, right? So, what if somebody's a king and somebody's a worker? And then you're a pawn and they take somebody else's pawn? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know, that's a, that's a difference, right? So the Bible also says that you have to be uh, subject to your masters in this world, right? So we all have employers. We all have work for somebody. You ain't going to get away from working for somebody, right? So the, Bible told, uh, the Bible says, he who does not work should not eat. You know, you heard that? Right? So when to have a job, you work for somebody, right? I work for somebody. Right. I can do what I want. Then the Bible says, I got to work for that person just like I would work for God. Right. I mean, I got to treat that person right. and work, do my work just like I, would, I was doing it for God. Right. There's a difference between that and somebody who's brought you under bondage to lead you to disruption. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I, I'm not going to say I'm a demon, but I would kind of have an understanding of something. That is what it means. Like, you just have power as far as somebody with the power of what it means, you do not know why. Well, you did. Well, no, no, yeah. If somebody has a power over you that obstructs your freedom, right, and obstructs the way you, uh, you serve God. Right. God gave you free will. That's why God gave you free will. You don't yeah. have to work for that person. If you don't have the freedom to leave that situation, then that's not a good situation. Right. right. But I am willingly... Go back to him. Huh? It's possible for demons to go back to heaven. Probably not the devil, but for demons to go back to heaven. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, we're getting sidetracked here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Way side track. Who is that? Be quiet. Let him finish. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So. All right. So. So my point is, 
um, at that moment, <coughs> things went bad, right? So there were people who were using that girl for profit. Yes. And they got angry that their source of their income was now gone away, right? Uh -huh. You all with me? Yeah. Yes. So, so they caught Paul and Silas, who was with his companion, and they brought them before the rulers in the marketplace and accused them of causing a disruption and teaching people customs and things that uh, uh, they were not supposed to observe, okay? So they didn't say they freed this girl from a demonic oppression. They said what? They, these guys are teaching some weird stuff I don't know anything about, right? <laughs> With it's a false maker. accusation, right? That's what people do, right? When they don't like what you're preaching, they they try to accuse you of something that is different, right? Yeah. They don't they twist it because they don't say this message brings free, uh, freedom and hope and love uh, uh, for those who hear it and receive it. They said what? These guys are trying to cause some disruption, right? right. So, but Jesus said what? If they rejected me, they will also reject you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got to play the race card here because they were Romans, and then they tried to turn it around because Paul the Silas was Jewish. Yeah, they're trying to make it about race, and that was not what it was about. So, so the point is, uh, um, they made a false accusation, and they and the rulers agreed with them and put them in the prison. Okay, now things are going really bad for Paul and Silas. Okay, and not only did they put them in any prison, it was not your sheriff's office, okay, uh, county jail. They put them in inside a deep, it says in the inner prison. And not only were they thrown in prison, their hands and feet were bound, shackled, right? With this metal thing. Huh? The book of Acts, chapter 16. Okay, so they, uh, if you want to reference, that is. Verse 24, nice. So they put them in the inner, trust them, uh, trust them, just push them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in their stock. Okay? Um, and so they were shackled. Not only were they in prison, inside the prison, they were shackled. And so now let's think about the first words we read. Okay? Or for all things work together for good. Those, for those who are called according to his purpose, purpose. right? Amen. Right. Yeah. So, if you are in this situation, <coughs> having done nothing wrong, right? Because the Bible says, well, don't suffer as a wrongdoer, but it's okay. You might suffer as a Christian, right? right. That's all they did. They, they were just being a Christian, right? They didn't suffer <coughs> as a wrongdoer. They just did something good. So, if you suffer as a good person, um, would you still believe in the person that called you, right? And that's what we have to ask ourselves. And because what did they do? It was midnight, what were they doing? They were singing so loud and praying, and it said that the prisoners heard them. They were deep inside this prison, and they were singing loud and praising, and everybody heard them. Maybe some of them were annoyed, I don't know, right? Amen. But, I mean, imagine the situation. It's midnight. They could have been sleeping, right? But they decided to praise God, okay? In the midst of their depressing, horrible situation, okay? And that's what that word is. What? Taking care no matter what situation you're in. He didn't doubt, you know, uh, I'm no different, right? He <laughs> doubt God and the vision that he saw. He could have said, God, I don't know, maybe I made a mistake. Right? Maybe that was just a random dream to come to Macedonia. Look at what happened to me, right? No, You all with me? Yes. He didn't do that. He said, well, he started singing praises to God in the midst of his private bondage, right? So there's a difference between this bondage and the one that the young lady was under, right? <coughs> Right. This is physical bondage, right? She was spiritually bound. You all with me? Mm -hmm. yes. There's a difference. There was a demon binding her spirit that she can't choose mm -hmm. to what uh, to follow God. That'd be horrible. This be Paul and Silas were bound physically, but they were, in their mind and spirit they were free. That's why they were singing praises, right? You sing when you're joyful, right? Right. You all, you all sing when you're angry. That's the last thing you want to do, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the last thing I want to do. So ask yourself <laughs> how, what your demeanor is, right? And, um, so, so they were uh, physically bound. Jesus said what? 
fear not those who can kill your body, but can't touch your soul, right? But fear him who can kill the body and the soul, right? So, so take heed to that message. So Paul and Silas uh, have so much freedom in the spirit that they didn't care about their physical bondage. Didn't matter what's happened in their body. Didn't matter that they didn't have any money. Didn't matter they didn't have a home. Didn't matter they didn't have physical freedom. But they rejoiced in their spiritual freedom. With me? Yes. Amen. So, so God was so pleased in that offering of praise, right? In that moment, he was, he was so pleased in that, something miraculous happened. Did anybody know what happened? A violent earthquake. earthquake. Yeah. A violent earthquake. A violent earthquake. Usually, <laughs> earthquake brings what? Shaking. Disruption. Anybody yeah. heard, heard the San Francisco earthquake? It's a famous one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 1906. Right? Oh, what's the point? Oh, I know that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Random. Uh, but it was a very destructive earthquake, right? And this right. was a violent earthquake. Maybe it was an 8 mm-hmm. out of 10 or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And it didn't destroy people, okay? It didn't destroy the prison. So when God does a miracle, okay? It says what? My the word that proceeds out of my mouth will not come back to me void, but it will fulfill the purpose for which it was sent. Right? It was in Isaiah. That was fulfilled today. When God said send an earthquake, it fulfilled the exact purpose he was sent for. What? It was just to open the door yeah. and break the shackle. Oh my god. It was a custom made earthquake. <laughs> I mean, have you heard of a custom-made car or a suit? Yeah. It was exactly tailored, right? It was a custom-made earthquake. Have you ever heard of that before? Right? It was just open the doors and broke their chain. Oh, my God. What a mighty God we serve. Can you praise the mighty God we serve? Yes. Hallelujah. Have you all had a custom-made miracle in your life? Yes. Just meant just for you? God is good. It's a miracle that was just made for you? Yes. Can we praise Him then? Amen. Amen. When you tell somebody else about that miracle, they can't believe you. See, they don't even understand. They don't relate to it. But you know in your heart yes. that miracle is just from yes. God, just for you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Heaven. You all with me? Oh yes. yeah. But then, so can we sing in the middle, uh, in the middle of our temporary distress? Yep. Yes. yes. Can we praise Him in the middle of our temporary distress? Yes. 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 Amen. 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 So God sent a custom-made earthquake. For Paul and Silas, for two people, mm-hmm. just for two people, right? You all might think, man, there's so many people around me, they all have been, why does God even care? It was just two people. So those people have been in prison uh, for so, so long, the other people. And now Paul and Silas shows up one day, and they start singing, and an earthquake happens. Oh my God. Right? Are you with me? Yes. So Paul and Silas saw a wonderful miracle, and... That was not even the most amazing thing that happened. Okay, so the doors flung open, the shackles broke down, and the prison guard came running, and he took a sword, and he was going to kill himself. You know why? Because he thought the prisoners escaped. Because not only did Paul and Silas's uh, door flung open, all the prisoners their doors flung open Amen. and they're bound to it. So when the God, word of God comes, it's not just for one person, it's for everybody. Right? It brings freedom and joy to everybody. You all with me? Yes. So all the prisoners were, that's why the gospel cannot be shut down. The people have tried to shut down this gospel. You cannot shut down this gospel, okay? It's been 2,000 years later. It's still going stronger, only stronger, because the word of God said, My, I will not come back till this word of peace is preached to all the nations and all the tongues. We brown people are here because the gospel could not be shut down. You all with me? And it's only growing. It's growing in China. It's growing in Mongolia. It's growing in Russia. Different in Muslim countries. Because his gospel cannot be shut down. Amen. You all with me? Because all the prison doors flung open. You all with me? Yes. So so then the prison guard was afraid because they knew they were going to kill him if all the prisoners escaped. And he, it was an honor thing, right? It was his responsibility. And it was his honor that was at stake. And he was going to just kill himself because he couldn't stand it. Right? And then Paul and Silas, man... What could they have done? They could have ran out of there, right? Right. They're like, okay, this is the God brought this miracle in my life. 
And I better get take advantage of it, right? right. That's how we think. Yeah. Like, God, it's all about me. Let me get out of here, right? Let me get out of this situation. Let, uh, look out for you, right? That's what everybody preaches these days, right? Take care of you first. Isn't that what you hear? Yeah. yeah. But Paul and Silas did not do that. They said what? They waited yeah, because they, we'll the Spirit you. of God that was in them told them to wait, right? Mm -hmm. the, same, said the same Spirit that brought them to that place, brought them to the prison, told them to wait. Okay? Well, what a mighty man of God. Right? It's not the people on stage, the great preachers. It's people like that. Okay? We're willing to give up everything. Like Pastor Barn, I know you guys are thankful for, just like my wife said, a piece of metal. Yes. Right? But, but what it's Pastor Barn uh, done for you guys is much more valuable. He gave his whole life for this ministry. Right? Right. It's much more valuable uh, uh, than any band you can give. Right? Yes. So, anyway, so... Uh, so the prison guard came, and uh, Paul said, Sir, don't do any harm to yourself. We're still here. All of us are still accounted for, and we're still here. Okay? And uh, he came in trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas, and uh, said, uh, uh, He didn't say, give me an explanation. What just happened? Right? He didn't try to bind them up again. All he said was what? Sir, what must I do? Did he say? Yeah. Yeah. Man, that is the question. How did he know what to ask? Because when you and I are confronted with the truth, right? The naked truth of the gospel of Christ. There ain't no more questions. Okay? Stop asking questions. Okay? Sometimes we just need to shut up and ask the right question. And what's the right question? What must I do to be saved? And say, it doesn't matter what's happening else is happening in your life. Stop making excuses, right? Amen. Stop arguing with yourself. There's only one important question. What is that? What must I do to be saved? That's it. Are you ready to ask that question today? What must I do to be saved? Yes. Yeah, you all with me? Yes. yes. And because once you do, you receive that promise you read first, which is what? That all things work together for those who are called according to His purpose. Them that love God for call according to his purpose. So everything else goes away. The only thing that matters is what must I do to be saved? And Paul, what Paul said was what? Believe in the Lord. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And he told the word to everybody in his house. That's it. That's the simple truth. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That he can save your soul. Okay? It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, or, uh, you know, uh, um, you live in the palace or on the street, okay? This is the one question you have to ans be have answered in your life. Mm -hmm. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your house shall be saved, okay? And that's the question we have to ask. So then the whole prison, uh, his whole family got saved. They got baptized the same morning, the next morning, right? They didn't wait. And they got baptized, and they all became Christians, okay? And this was what that vision was for. Okay, they went through a ter terrible time, but I believe what Paul was sent there to save the family. Yes. Okay, Paul uh, and they and Lydia and others there uh, sowed the seed that is responsible for all of us. You all with me? Yes. That spread the gospel through all of Europe, right? Macedonia is not a very powerful country now, but it was more famous at that time. Right? But the gospel spread like wildfire, and then people from there took it to other places, like India and other places, right? And it spread there. Just like I said, the gospel of Christ cannot be shut down, okay? You can kill people for spreading it, but you'll never shut down the word of God, okay? <coughs> people in uh, Muslim countries die because they uh, believe, just believing, not even preaching, just believing in Jesus, right? Sometimes their families kill them because they became a Christian. Right? As, as Christina was saying, the, you know, our parents might have been kicked out of their homes uh, because just for believing. Okay? That's it. All of the belief. Right? What does that matter? Yes, it matters because offense. The, the word of God is what? A rock of offense. Because that means that if your life has changed, that means I better change my life too. Right? So let people see your lives and it's a stumbling block for them. Like, this must mean something. Man, how did that person become a Christian? How did so much love and joy 
uh, and miracles come out of this one person. That means it's, it, it's a stumbling block for somebody else. It's an offense for somebody else because that means I better do something with my own life, right? <laughs> there is truth behind this name. There is truth behind this custom earthquake. You all with me? Amen. You all with me? Amen. So, yeah. God speaking to you this morning. Yes. You ready to ask that question, what must I do to be saved? Um, all right, that's, that's all I had this morning. All right. Let's uh, bow our heads. And pray. Just, just raise your hands if you want prayer, if you want to submit to the word, and I will pray for you. Pray for you. Just raise your hands and we'll just pray for you. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your powerful word this morning. Thank you for the ministry. Thank you for Pastor Bond. Uh, thank you for all the wonderful folks here, Lord. Lord, let the word of God seep into their hearts. And uh, how we do a uh, more powerful work than that earthquake did 2,000 years ago. Lord, uh, she, let, let your word shake them to the core and break the shackles that bind their spirit. And Lord, free them from uh, all oppression, all addictions. And all the demonic influences, Lord Jesus, we uh, we plead uh, the blood of Christ upon them, protect the ministry, protect those who are working uh, here, and uh, bless the van that uh, was provided to them, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for being here today. Thank you for everything you do. Amen. 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 A guy that I worked with, I found out yesterday, he died on Saturday. His name was Henry, and if you could just keep his family in your prayers, please, because it was just uh, all his, uh, he had an enlarged heart, and he, uh, he passed, he uh, took a good gasp of the breath and fell down at the self-checkout, in front of self-checkout at Walmart on Saturday, and I, my general manager told me yesterday at work, so, and he was around my age. Yeah, so we could just keep his family. She has a good job now after being on those stupid dope things for years. She was a good Christian. She was about her soul and poorly. passed away on the 29th. Anybody else have any comments you want to make before we make an action? It's a good it's a good meeting we had today. Again, we thank our guests for being here and everything you do. And uh, the goal is everlasting life. That's the goal above all other goals. Love God and love your neighbor. By the way, we do a newsletter every once in a while. I was hoping the newsletters are on that uh, desk. Are there newsletters there now? No. no. All right, no. I'm inside. Well, I somebody think. step inside and check out here. I've got four right here because those newsletters seem to be dispensed to people who come to the land. So anyway, it just tells more about our ministry and how to understand better how to pray and how to work. So, today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday. I hope everybody goes to church tomorrow. It's a sacred day. And let's make Sunday a holy day and carry on. Let's make the day a good day. May God share our prayers and answer us and help us to keep moving. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I'm going to close by saying thanks to the India Church for the donation of the van. It is has been and will continue to be for many years a great blessing to the Compassion Organization.